First World War originated in Europe in 1914 and over the next four years became one of the most brutal and deadly conflicts in history, culminating in approximately 40 million deaths, both combatants and civilians. Immediately following the trauma of the war, the Spanish flu overwhelmed nations across the globe. Both soldiers and civilians, already weakened by years of war, starvation, disease and displacement, suffered greatly. The number of deaths far outnumbering those lost as a direct result of the war. As many as 100 million people may have died over a mere two year period. The origins of the virus have never been conclusively established, but we do know that it did not, it, it did not originate in Spain. News coverage of the virus was scarce in the early stages as government work, worked to keep news of the flu out of the papers in order to keep morale high after years of conflict. Due to lack of censorship, however, the Spanish press reported freely and so became associated with the virus, hence the Spanish flu. Whilst we can't be certain of its origins, it seems clear that it was incubated behind the front lines in the final months of the war and then spread around the UK and around Europe and the rest of the globe by soldiers going home when the war ended. The early deaths were largely among the soldiers themselves, but the nurses and doctors treating them were soon falling victim to the pandemic, followed rapidly by a spread into the wider population. One ordinary soldier's story illustrates the tragedy of this terrible global pandemic. Sidney Richardson, my great-great-uncle, served in France and Italy before being wounded in the final weeks of the war. He was sent back to England to recuperate in hospital and it was probably here that he contracted the Spanish flu. He was visited in hospital by his wife, who seems to have then tragically carried the virus back into the family home. Sidney died on November the 14th, 1918, just three days after the armistice. His daughter Elsie died the next day, aged only 18 months, and his three-year-old son Fred died a week later. Sidney's name can be found on the war memorial in his home village, and this is true of many of the service personnel who died as a result of the virus. The names of the nurses, doctors and family members who also died do not appear on any memorials or honour rolls, but we should remember them as we remember the other victims of war and its aftermath. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row by row, and make our place and in the sky, the larks so bravely the singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up the call with the phone, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye bring faith with those who die. We shall not see through, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Efforts to contain the Spanish flu in Manchester were led by the city's medical officer, James Niven, a pioneer in preventative health measurements intended to slow the spread of infection. Schools and businesses closed. He encouraged hand washing and isolation of those affected. Despite their relative unpopularity, he encouraged the wearing of masks. His measures helped to keep the mortality rate low. Only 322 Spanish flu-related deaths recorded during the spring of summer and of 1918. However, the signing of the armistice making the end of World War I in November 1918 drew many people to Albert Square to celebrate. 383 deaths from the flu were recorded in the last week of the same November alone as a result. The second wave of the Spanish flu that followed soon after was far more violent and tragic. Men and women who had contributed years to the war effort and survived were claimed by a disease that did not discriminate. James Niven held the post of City Medical Officer for Manchester through the pandemic and retired a few years later in 1922. When you are standing at your hero's grave or near some homeless village where he died, remember through your heart's rekindling pride, the German soldiers who were loyal and brave. Men fought like brutes and hideous things were done, and you have nourished hatred, harsh and blind. But in that Golgotha, perhaps you'll find the mothers of the men who killed your son. The spring and summer of 2020 saw many of us clapping for our carers and the NHS 
and at a time never more prudent, we remember, as part of our service today, a young nurse and Old Waconian, Frances Smith. Frances is the only female Old Waconian who died in service during World War I and is remembered on the memorial board in reception. She was a foundation student who joined the school in November 1894, shortly after her father's death. She remained at the school for four years and her leaving certificate describes her as frank, good-natured and obliging and physically capable of large amounts of work. These qualities would serve her well as in 1911 she was working as a sick nurse in the private house in Manchester. When the Great War broke out in 1914, Frances joined the Queen Alexander's Imperial Nursing Service. She was posted to Aylesbury to the military hospital, nursing soldiers invalided home from France. In 1918, she contracted influenza and lost her life on July the 1st. She is buried in Gorton Cemetery in Manchester with other members of her family. A Sonnet by John Buxton. I saw men's homes burst into sudden flower of crimson petals round each golden shell. I listened to the whining bombs that fell and felt the hard earth tremble of their power. I saw bewildered eyes that hour by hour had peered through rifle sights. I heard men tell how many rounds they had fired. I learned the smell of cattle burning in the byres is sour. So much war taught me, and when I return, because I did not cower nor shirk the fight, but took a little part in this mad play, because I too have helped to kill, wreak, burn. You did your duty, helped defend the right. You too were brave, some poor blind fool will say. On the 11th of September 1918, British Prime Minister David Lloyd George arrived in Manchester to receive the freedom of the city. Although raised in Wales, he was born in Cholton on Medlock in Manchester and the city was proud of its famous son. He received a hero's welcome from the soldiers on leave and the munitions girls who lined Piccadilly and Deansgate in the rain to see him. He made a great speech about the war at his freedom of the city ceremony and a second smaller speech praising the service members of the area. When the time arrived to give a third speech, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister was too old to continue. A doctor soon diagnosed flu, but the media reported that it was a mild chill caused by the rain. His aides did not want to alarm the public nor provide a morale boost to the opposition. His condition worsened and eventually an announcement was made to the public. However, few knew just how serious his condition was. He travelled back to London on the 21st of September wearing a ventilator and it took many weeks for him to recover fully. Despite being a man of great energy, the flu almost broke the Prime Minister and his brush with, with death was almost fatal in the last few months of the Great War. Can we start over? Can we start over? Can we be strangers again? Let me introduce myself. We can laugh and talk and relearn what we already know and come up with some new inside jokes and create new memories and give each other a second chance. There will be peace when attitudes change, when self-interest is seen as part of common interest. When old rings, old scores and old mistakes are deleted from the account. When the aim becomes cooperative and mutual benefit or group gain. When justice and equality before the law become the basis of governments. When basic freedom exists. When leaders, political, religious, educational and the police and media wholeheartedly embrace the concepts of justice, equality, freedom, tolerance and reconciliation as a basis for a new one. When parents teach their children new ways to think about people, there will be peace when enemies become fellow human beings. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them.
Thank <laughs> you.